Well, hello to all of you again. Um, my name is Pastor Nathan Richards. I'm coming to you once more from inside the beautiful sanctuary here in Augusta at the South Parish Congregational Church. And um, I just was thinking of the words of the psalmist that I, I shared, I think it was this past Sunday. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It is a beautiful day outside, beautiful fall day outside. And um, as I've mentioned to some of you many times, uh, fall is my favorite time of year. Uh, and it was my always has been my favorite time of year, except for when I was uh, a kid growing up in Norwich Walk, uh, where fall always meant, of course, that you had to go back to school. And what I much rather have been doing than going back to school when I was growing up was going fishing. And I've got my fishing pole in here with me today for a couple of reasons. Um, any of you who know me, if I have some spare time, I'd like to go fishing, along with a lot of other things I like to do, but fishing is certainly one of them. And I told a story in church this past Sunday about a fishing trip I went upon not too, too long ago where um, I had a big and caught a big, beautiful uh, salmon. And uh, it slipped off my hook while I was, uh, after I had landed it, I uh, slipped off my hook and went back into the water. Um, uh, I was trying to take a picture of it. I probably was going to release it anyway, but I was trying to get a picture of it, and it ended up being kind of a kind of a mess as I recognized my limits uh, as a, as a person and trying to do too many things. And I talked a little bit about that in church this past Sunday about how we try to do too many things and how we are uh, limited, but how God is limitless. And who do we want to put our trust in more? Is it into ourselves who are limited and have only so much that we can do and what we can offer on our own? Or would we rather put our trust in the creator of the universe, uh, a God who is limitless? And um, I talked about that this past, this past week. But today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about, um, about some of Paul's words which are part of this coming Sunday's lectionary readings from Philippians chapter 1. Um, as Paul talks to those who were coming to know who Jesus was and those who uh, had come to know who Jesus was, uh, as Paul writes in his letter to the church in Philippi, he's really kind of invoking in them a sense of who they are as what we now know as Christians. What does it mean to be a Christian? And I think one of the things I think about, what is it? What is it? What does a Christian look like? What does a Christian look like? And one of the things Paul says uh, in, again, that first chapter of Philippians towards, I think about the middle of this week's readings, he says, live your life, as he talks to the Philippi, the Philippian church, live your life or your lives in a matter, or rather in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. What did Paul mean by that? Well, I'd like to go back to my fishing once more. Um, when I go fishing, wherever I'm going fishing, there is no doubt uh, if people see me walking down the road or walking down across the field, wherever I might be, that I am going fishing. And why is that? Well, one of the main reasons is I have a fishing pole. And um, this is my fishing pole. And um, people see me walking with a fishing pole. and so really no doubt what I'm doing. I also carry a lot of different lures and go fishing. And when people see me carrying all my lures with me in this small tackle box, they're all kind of bright and shiny in there. You can't see them that well. Uh, but if they saw that, they would say, well, guess what? He's either going fishing or he's been fishing. And if people see the lures that I have, um, the, the things that I use to catch fish with, I mean, if they see these, if I'm carrying these on any part of my person or if it's hooked to my fishing pole, they're saying, look, that guy's going fishing. There's only one use for these, these lures with their hooks. Um, catch fish. And I have a lot of different kinds of lures that I use. Um, this is a mooselick wobbler. This is a, a lure called a weeping willow. There's only one use for these, that is to catch fish. And I also sometimes carry worms with me. So 
look at this big old worm. Well, this isn't really a real worm. This is a, a plastic worm. But uh, again, if you see someone carrying worms with them, I would bet at least nine times out of ten that they're going fishing somewhere. So that's what a fisherman looks like, or a fisher person, or a fisher, fisher woman. Uh, if they're carrying those things, there's no doubt you're going to look at them and say, well, they're either going fishing or getting ready to go fish, or they're coming back from fishing. But they are involved in fishing. So what, is a, what does a Christian look like? What does a person look like who's a follower, follower of Jesus Christ? Well, the good news is, and that's the gospel message, is that a follower of Jesus Christ looks like me and you. He looks like you and I. Kind of ordinary on the outside. But what really sets a Christian apart from what other people are like or look like even, is what's on the inside. That is the way they act and the way they treat other people and the way they conduct their lives. Now, does that mean we're perfect people? No, of course not. That's also what a Christian looks like. We're not perfect. We often, um, as Paul says, do just the opposite of what uh, Christ wants us to do. That's also being a part of, or of, of, a, Christ, of a Christian uh, church. It's, it's not being a perfect person. It's being a person who's willing to worship Jesus Christ and, and feels a need to do so. That's what a Christian looks like. He looks a lot like you and, you and I with all our mistakes and difficulties and obstacles. But it also means that same person worships with other people. In the early church, very early church, like the first century church, when the early Christian uh, Christians were being persecuted, they were brought before the emperor and they were asked a simple question. And that simple question was, do you believe in and worship uh, Jesus Christ? That is, do you actively worship? Do you gather with other people to worship Jesus Christ? And if the question, if the answer to the question was no, that person was allowed to go. But if that person answered yes, of course they faced, well, they faced persecution by Rome. Because the definition of a Christian during the early church, um, infant years, if you will, the beginning years of Christianity, was one who gathered in the name of Jesus Christ. So one of the things that really defines who a Christian is, is that they gather in the name and worship Jesus Christ. It's not just enough to say, I believe in Jesus Christ. You have to take that time to worship Jesus Christ. And one of the ways that we worship is gathering to worship him together. In a place like this or a similar place, that's what a Christian looks like. But as I started to say as well, it's a lot about what we're, we are on the inside rather than what we are on the outside. Well, if we see someone going into a church on Sunday morning or, or another day of the week, depending upon your denomination or, or where you worship or how you worship, if going into a place of worship, someone's going to look just like they do at me with this fishing pole and say, well, they must be a Christian. They're going to church. But it's even more than that. Because it's about what we take from church when we go into the world. It's what we learn at church. It's what we feel compelled to share from our time at church. What does a Christian look like? Well, a Christian is kind. A Christian uh, is unselfish. It puts, a Christian puts the needs of other people first. A Christian is not boastful. A Christian strives to be humble. A Christian puts the needs of other people first and considers them before their own needs. Therefore, a Christian is unselfish. And in the end, a Christian shows and demonstrates those things with the care and the love that they actually show towards and in the lives of other people. That is, if you see someone being kind or, or uh, 
caring to someone else, there's a pretty good chance that they're a Christian, that they believe in Christ in some way. Not always, but many times. If you see a, if you see a person who walks humbly in their life and puts the needs of others first, there's a really good chance that they're a Christian or at the very least that Christ is working in their life. That isn't to say that Christianity has uh, all, the, all the answers or all the stock in being humble or kind, but it's a really good chance that when you see someone acting in a loving and caring way towards others, showing kindness and love and unselfishness, walking humbly, as the Bible says, before God, there's a really, really, really good chance that they're they're not going fishing, but what they are doing is that they're doing what Christ asked them to do. You know, my favorite TV evangelist, and I think I might have mentioned this before, my favorite TV minister, if you will, was Mr. Rogers. Now, when Mr. Rogers and his TV show was on when I was a kid in Mr. Rogers' neighborhood, I had no idea. Uh, when I was growing up as a child, that he was a Christian, not only that, a clergy. He was an ordained Episcopal priest, I believe. And uh, I had no idea about that. But now that I look back, I say to myself, well, of course he was. Look at the things that he talked about and shared with young people, things that need to be shared with all of us. He talked about being kind to other people. He talked about being humble and not boastful. He talked about being... Uh, or ne meeting the needs of others who were who were sick or or needed care. He talked about putting the needs of others first. And all that he did, he demonstrated who he was by his actions. That was he was a Christian. So I guess what I would challenge us each to do in our walk with our Lord and our in our faith, is to demonstrate that faith, to show who we are, not just to talk about it. There is a deep need to worship with other people. Now, I know we live in a time now where it's difficult to do that, and I know many of you have said, you know, as soon as there's a vaccine or when there's a time in which you feel safe and comfortable to come to church, you will. But you're really worshiping with others right now if you're watching this video. There is a need to worship if you are a Christian to be with others, to spend time with others who have the common faith in Jesus Christ. And then to demonstrate that faith through the words and actions uh, that you share with others each and every day. So when Paul asks that question, or rather when Paul makes that statement to the Philippian church, live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, I would say that those are still words that are relevant for us today that Paul is reaching out to us in those words, even today, and saying, live your life in a way that demonstrates, in a manner that demonstrates that you believe in and living the life, the gospel, as preached by Jesus Christ. Remembering that it's, it's not enough to just to say you're a Christian, that you have to demonstrate you're a Christian. You have to show it. Just like me walking down the road with this fishing pole. People have no doubt what I'm doing when I got this fishing pole in my hand or my daughter knows when I get this fishing pole and get out to the truck, she doesn't even have to ask me where I'm going. She knows dad's going fishing. And I grab my tackle box with my lures here and pick up my lures or, or grab some worms out of the garden. No one has any doubt where I'm going or what I'm doing. Let the same be said of us each who claim to be Christians. May people look at us and say, ah, that is a person who believes in Jesus Christ by the words we share, by the actions we demonstrate, by the way we live our lives. May that be our prayer today. Gracious God, we thank you for this time that we spent together in worship. May each of us, in our own way and in our own time, demonstrate to others that we believe in you, in a risen Lord. We thank you for this opportunity to share with each other for this time of worship, which really does show, again, who and what we believe in. May the words and the, the actions that we share with the world be your words and your actions. And may we show each day and demonstrate each day our love for others in and through the very name of Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Again, I hope to see you at church soon. 
Um, one of the things we're talking about at church is trying to set up maybe one of these videos um, for children. And I could do a children's time with with uh, with the young people. And we really want to just make sure and invite young people to come back to church uh, with their parents when they feel comfortable and are able to do so. Um, one of the really important aspects of our, our faith walk here at South Paris Church, Congregational Church, is, is really our children. And so we invite our young people to come back to church when they can. And certainly, in the meantime, we're working on ways to reach out to them as well. So with that said, I hope to see you at church. May God bless you. May God keep you in his care today and always. Go in peace, my friends. Amen.